Welcome back to the channel guys where we stuck on an island. I'm stuck with you, but we always smiling. So pretty much um you guys realize I'm not really um doing like a lot of vlogging and stuff. I'm just not in the mood. Like I went to the road a few times to do a few errands, but nothing special. But um, I'm I'm in a more of a how-to uh, mood at the moment. I'm working a lot on um how to be trying to produce some some videos for that. But at the moment I'm gonna actually do another how-to in terms of cooking something more culinary. Um, this is going to be an experience that I've never really had before. I remember watching my aunt making sorrel, and that's what we're going to be doing today. I've never done it before, but let's take a try. If it's good, I'll let you know. Judah's mom might be the, well, might be a good testament to see how good it is. And Judah herself, but for me, I think it's going to be lit. So guys, here we got our sorrel, pretty much the star of the show. Um, funnily, I think sorrel only grows once per year. Look at that, it's already standing in my hands. But the first thing that I gotta do is to wash the sorrel off. Alright guys, so I think the, the key thing to a really good sorrel is to make sure that you're not stingy with the sorrel. I bought about like a thousand dollars worth of sorrel which I think is like it was 250 per pound so that's four pounds of sorrel so we got one here one here one here I'm looking to get back maybe three gallons from it I don't know but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make sure that when I'm when I'm actually steeping the sorrel I gotta make sure that the the color is brilliant red I don't want a pink or nothing like that I want it to be like blood red when I'm doing the sorrel so that's gonna be my key factor guys big up to the people eh? Well, no off a light to store with matches so pretty much what i have is just um the two pots maybe like halfway full of water because what i'm going to do i'm going to boil the water and then i'm going to add a few things to it to give it a little bit of flavor so of course for me salt is the flavor of everything like salt actually brings out the flavor in food um, i remember once when i was working i met this girl and she told me that told me that salt she put salt in her coffee and she was like yo it brings out the flavor and then guys trust me once I tried it I realized that my coffee was a lot better I just sprinkle a little bit in the coffee or whatever it is that you're making any drink you're making and it brings out a nice little flavor so I had pimento seeds in it as well I think pimento seeds will give it a little bit of spice I actually don't remember if my aunt used that but I'm just going with my instincts here and I think it should be good of course we're gonna add some ginger to that as well you'll realize that you you don't even have to boil sorrel because like if you steep it it will just change color like you will start extracting like the stuff from inside of the sorrel easily like i just had um i had this pan in there chilling for a little bit and the water was like pink already look at this one i just started to rinse it and look at this already isn't it so you ain't gotta really worry about you know boiling it just steep it and it's good for those of you who know my children you know that they're hungry they're right at the door just waiting all right it's food time of course guys, I have one of the stars of the show, which is the ginger. See, it's really dirty, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rinse this off with some water. And then of course, I can always use something like this. I think this is, uh, the company is called Titan or whatever it is, but it's a scotch bright we call it in Jamaica. And we can use that and just remove any of the excessive dirt. And then I'm just gonna cut it up, and then people normally grater it, but for me, I'm just gonna blend that shit. Alright guys, so we have the ginger all cleaned up and stuff. What I did, I broke it. Like I broke the fingers off with or whatever. So I could get into the cracks a lot better. And you know what? Whenever I'm cooking guys, like I'm no professional chef or nothing like that. But I normally try to look in the kitchen and find like anything that I think would make sense inside of it. And I remember that I had these. These are um, cinnamon leaves. They're good with porridge. They add nice flavor. So I'm going to use these, you know, to give my thing a little bit more flavor. And all I gotta do is just toss a few of these on top. So I kind of missed that, but the dog's pretty much ganged up on Judah. Because whenever they, they want to play, like all of them come at once. <laughs> okay, okay kids. Oh my gosh, too much love, too much love. <laughs> okay, okay, too much, too much. So inside the blender I have most of the, the ginger, because I don't want it to be too, too harsh. 
and I put a little bit of water in there just to help it, you know, spin around. As much as I'm like all for old traditions and stuff, guys, like I, I'm not into braiding like ginger and that type of stuff. Like I don't know if you remember when like we used to lick things, like ginger, I get like coconut, and like your knuckles got grated with the ginger. Like, bro, remember that? Sorry, she, no, she never bought them time, guys. So our water is boiled, so we can start adding the sorrel. We're gonna remove it off the fire and then let it steep. All right, so we got Judah on the cam. <laughs> <laughs> so look at this, guys. This is just it, just resting. You see all that red already? without even being in the heat. So I'm just gonna add this in there and then leave it overnight. Luckily, like my helper was here, the lady that helps me clean the house and stuff. Well, Steven, that's a helper. Yeah, I don't like belittling people, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, yeah, she, she told me that I could put it to steep and leave it overnight. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave this overnight also with others. That's how you get the juices out. All right, baby. <laughs> so guys, I also tossed some of the ginger on top and just put it in there as well. I don't have to worry about it because I'm gonna strain it tomorrow anyway, so it's gonna be all good. <laughs> so Judah has a headache because she put the watermelon on her head. She was like, what did you say to her? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> So some of you might be like wondering you know, why I make so much sorrel and stuff, but to be quite honest, um, it's seasonal. It's one of my favorite Jamaican drinks, if not my favorite ones. And you can only get the sorrel once a year, I believe, so why not make use of it? And what I'm gonna do is like the excessive amounts, I'm gonna actually put it into like a few rum bottles and stuff and preserve it so I could have it back the next year. And that's when the sorrel gets really freaking good because it's almost like it becomes some form of a wine. But for those of you who, who don't have the chance to make your own sorrel, you can actually get it from the True Juice. Yeah, their sorrel is bomb. The one, the, the one, I had it as, at um, Island Grill. Island Grill carries True Juice. I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but like, I got it from Island Grill and it was pretty good. I actually enjoyed it. Of course, that one is non-alcoholic, so you won't have like, you don't really get that ginger thing on that. But it's still not like silver. But it's a concentrate, I believe, and it's, it's really good. I would go with it, but I like the homemade one, which is with the rum. Bruh. All right guys, so pretty much I've I successfully got the three pots down and they're gonna be steeping For those of you who don't know what I mean by steeping It just means like it's the best way to make tea in general meaning like you just put the boiling water over the The herbs or whatever and it helps to preserve it not killing like all of the The nutrients or whatever. So that's the best way to make it. So that's the process So it's not with a constant heat underneath under it. It's just with the water hot water so I'm gonna leave that overnight, then tomorrow I'm gonna strain it off, which I will show you hopefully if I don't, if I don't forget. And then I will redo, I will redo the sorrel one more time, but with a very small batch. Alright guys, so it's definitely a beautiful morning. You see the dogs, they're just chilling. So let's just finish off the sorrel. So if you look at the sorrel now, check it out man. Ooh, it's nice and red really red so i'm just gonna strain these really quickly so this is my setup guys um of course the sorrel is really big so this is gonna more than catch it i'm just mostly trying to catch the the ginger that i actually put in there so let's see how that works all right seems to work just okay what i'm gonna do i'm gonna refilter it again until you know everything is all done so if you guys realize i strained the first part the second part but this sorrel is still awfully red it did lose a bit of its color it's not as dark so it's still a little bit pink, maybe a little bit crimson. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna re-steep it one more time. But this time, I'm not gonna put the same amount of water. I'm gonna actually cut the water in about half. Because of course, it's not gonna give me such a red sorrel anymore. So instead of putting this in one whole pot, I will put this and this in one pot. So two pots in one this time. You understand? And that way, I'll still get a very rich sorrel while still not wasting it, because there's still more in there. All right, guys, so I just did a little bit more ginger for the last batch I'm going to make. In terms of this batch, the ginger is perfect. Like, you can tell that there's ginger in there. It's not too harsh. Um, and, yeah, I pretty much like it, but I'm going to put some more for the last batch. The last batch, I think, I'm going to actually make the sorrel wine with. 
You know what I'm saying? Yo, it's gonna be bomb. I don't know if you guys have ever had like fermented sour wine. I'ma put this in a bottle for like a year. And yeah. Alright guys, so FYI, this is gonna be my final strain. So I have the same strainer below and then another strainer up top just to make sure that everything's out. Yo, and if you guys can have like a bigger pot, that'll make it easier for you instead of using so many pots and pots and pots. But yo, the pots were so expensive, I just, you know, worked with what I had. All right guys, so we're where we at the moment that we're waiting for, which is the sugar and the rum. Um, I don't even know the measurements. I'm just gonna put it in until I feel like it's kind of sweet. Lucky enough, I have a lot of batches there. So if it's too sweet, I can always add more sour. If it's too much rum, I can always dilute it back, but I don't want it to be too rummy where it's like, yo, it's like an alcoholic drink, but it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be alcoholic. Just a nice little hint of it where it's like, mm, yeah, got a nice little kick to it. Of course, with the wine variety that I want to make or the fermented version, I might add a little bit more rum than usual, but yeah. Guys, so pretty much that bag of sugar did for this and this. But remember I told you, do it to your own taste. Same thing with the rum. Just do it to your own taste. I'm just gonna slowly add the rum in and just taste check it, make sure it's to the level that I want it, and then keep going. Oh, whoa! Woo! Guys, mm. not that one that rum I put in there. Is, I think that was perfect, but I'm gonna add a little bit more because I'm, I'm bad like that. I'm just gonna add a little, just a toops more. So, mm -hmm. toops more. But I think they were perfect. Of course, guys, I got my trusty little pour so I can pour it in it's gonna be hard to pour while I'm videoing so I'm making enough to share with other people because of course I'm not gonna drink all this but for sure I'm gonna drink a lot of this though because I love sorrel all right guys so update you from this sorrel I got maybe like three three almost four gallons yeah about three gallons of sorrel out of it I think so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start making the wine see I got a few grains of rice just gonna pop that in there. I don't even know how many grains of rice that is. Maybe try to add a bit more. All right, that's a few grains of rice into it. And then of course, some pimento. Pimento is gonna help. Maybe one, two, three, four, five. Maybe about five pimentos I'm gonna add into it. All right guys, as you see, I added a little bit of rum to it, not too much, just to give this an extra kick. You can see the rice and also the pimentos floating at the bottom. All right, as you guys can see, my kitchen's a little bit messy at the moment, but normally, you know, when Jamaicans, we actually flying overseas and we have stuff carrying up like drinks. We normally take like plastic and put underneath the cork and then cork it. It's the same thing that me I do, pretty much. So I'm sealing in everything. I was gonna give it a little back and forth, make sure everything gets mixed. Even though that doesn't really even matter because it's gonna be in the fridge for like a year. And yeah, so I'm gonna mark it, I'm gonna label it, the date, and when <laughs> blow off it like a rich Merlot. But yeah, I, I stand corrected guys, pretty much you don't do, you don't put it on the fridge, you put it in a cool, dark place. I call my mom just now, just to double check. And like, I knew that it didn't make sense, because when I'm watching like, the people brewing stuff or making alcoholic beverages, they never put it in the fridge, so that was crazy of me. So I'm gonna put it in a really cool, dark place and leave it for a year. Mm. 